We had no idea what to expect from South Carolina's low country. But after spending five nights in Edisto Island, a sleepy laid-back barrier island just off the shores of South Carolina, we're super excited to share with you why Edisto Island is officially one of our favorite places we've ever visited. I already hear the waves. I'm in my happy place. But before we can show you around, we have a few stops to make as we head to the island. Our first stop was Marsh Hen Mill, a family-run farm and produce market known for their heirloom grains, grits, and cornmeal. The owners Greg Johnsman and his wife Betsy originally started Marsh Hen Mill using this restored, historic 1945 mill, which still sits in display inside the market. Let's do the unsalted and the smoked sea salt. Okay. Oh my god, there's so many fun things at this store. We ended up getting pimento cheese ravioli. They have fresh chickens, eggs, butter. There's way more than just grits. It's such a cool stop off point. Lots of cute things you could buy for the house as well. I'm loving this. I don't care what kind of butter you get, as long as I get this hat. <laughs> Gotta have the grits hat. Let's see it. What do you think? I mean, it does work. It works? It works. Of course it does. Next up is Flower Seafood Company where we're stocking up on some fresh South Carolina seafood. We are loaded up. I got all of the fresh fish and seafood. Scallops, shrimp, grouper. I got boiled peanuts. We are gonna be in for some good cooking this week. Good eating. Good eating. Mm -hmm. It feels so good to be back in the South where they have things like boiled peanuts and co close to the coast where they have fresh seafood. And grits. And grits. <laughs> it makes me feel like home. Oh, dang it. I dropped the nuts. No. Sea turtle nuts. There's a sea turtle like sanctuary out here somewhere. No way. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, this is so nice. Yes. State Park has two campgrounds, one that is right along the beach, and then they have another that is called the Live Oak Campground. That's where we're camping. The beach camp spots are in high demand, and even though we booked this about a month before we came here, they were totally filled up during our time visiting. But the Live Oak Campground is just as beautiful. It's surrounded with huge live oaks. So you're kind of like under this shaded canopy. It's really, really beautiful. About a 15 minute walk from there, if you like, is the town of Edisto. And then there is the beach side of the state park that you can enjoy endless beach views. And the best part is there's like hardly anyone here. I'm so used to crazy packed beaches in Florida. And this is just such a serene slice of heaven. If you're looking for a place to unplug, get away and just relax, 100% this is it. Dennis had to go back to the RV. <laughs> we are like rookies at beach days now. I guess it's been so long since we've been to a beach. We didn't bring towels. We didn't bring snacks. I mean, come on. Dennis thought we were walking here originally, so he wore his shoes, like hiking shoes. So he went back to change into flip-flops, grab some provisions for us to fully enjoy the warm day. Ah, oh, that's better. We've got boiled peanuts. Which, by the way, I don't know if you've ever had boiled peanuts or not. If you're not from the South, you may not be familiar with them. But these are the green type of peanuts. They dry them and then you boil them with spices for several hours and lots and lots of salt. And they are so delicious. The red boiled peanuts are the thicker type. I don't prefer those. Dennis loves that style, but I'm a green fan, which are normally found in the summer. So this is pretty surprising to see them right now, which is early November but they're like my favorite. My family, we grew up eating these. Anytime we saw them in the supermarket, we would buy them and we would cook them the entire time they were in season. So I'm happy to have some boiled peanuts in my life again. It's quiet here, which I like. 
and uh, the tide is going out and I'm just noticing how like far out it actually goes. But anyway, there's all these cool little like textures in the sand as the tide is going out and shells and stuff to kind of pick around in. This is really nice and I'm glad that it's not like jumping. I'm sure it gets jumping in summertime. I think this is a pretty sleepy place. Really? Yeah. Then we shouldn't be talking about it on the vlog then because once all y'all get here, it's gonna blow up. Yeah, don't ruin it. Listen, when you come here, be respectful of the sand dunes that you see behind me on the beach because this is a sea turtle nesting area between May and October. When you come to Edisto, love it, enjoy it, respect it. here on the island. So this is the yellow grits that we got from Marsh Hen Mill. We got the shrimp from Flowers Seafood Company. Marsh Hen Mill gave us instructions for shrimp and grits, but we don't have like half the ingredients. So I'm going to go rogue. Hopefully this works in our favor and I'm gonna kind of get inspired by the barbecue shrimp and grits that we had at 82 Queen in Charleston because they were so good and it seemed pretty simple. And I think we have all of the ingredients for that. So the, the recipe didn't call for you to add any spices to the grits, but my family cooks lots of grits. <laughs> so from them, I've learned to add salt, garlic powder, and paprika. Gives it a little flavor. So I'm getting the grits boiling over there. They're pretty much gonna sit with the lid on it for the entire cook time. To make it a little bit healthier, we're gonna add some kale and green onions to garnish, but this meal would pretty much not have any vegetables in it <laughs> if we didn't ask, add this. So we always like to throw extra vegetables in there when we can. Even that kale is probably not enough, but say la vie. Does anyone else's cat hate when they're cooking? Every single time we pull out a knife or do anything in the kitchen, Ollie starts complaining. We think it's hilarious. But I wonder if other cats do that too. She, however, doesn't care at all. She's perfect. The perfect princess pea. All clean. We are going to saute some onions, and since we like heat, I'm adding some jalapeno, and we're gonna get that nice and soft and sauteed with that salted smoked butter. And then we're gonna add the shrimp, get that going, and then add some barbecue sauce to round it all out. And then of course, we're gonna put cheese on top, just like at 82 Queen, because everything's better with cheese. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's see. As good as 82 Queen? Better. No way. Mm -hmm. Are you just saying that? I'm saying it because we cooked it. I'd give it a solid eight out of 10. Eight out of 10? Mm -hmm. Very good. It's a new day in Edisto Island. Another glorious, perfect fall day. I'm actually mad because I am in jeans when we left the house this morning. It was just a little bit chilly. 
and now the sun is out and we're at the beach and I just want to be in my bathing suit laying out. Yesterday we went to the beach at the state park but there are tons of beach access points all along Edisto Island. There are lots of developed homes and vacation homes. Wyndham has resort spots all along the island. So even if you're not coming here in an RV, there is lots of vacation options and you still have access to the beach all along in several different spots. But it's just absolutely beautiful here. We've seen so many butterflies overhead heading all in one direction. They're, they're clearly making their way south to Mexico for winter, which is really cool to see them in part of their very, very, very long journey, depending on where they started. Oh, I just love this beach and the sun so much. And the more we're talking to people, the more we're finding out there's so, so many other cool things we could have done other than just hanging out at the beach. If you're coming here, don't miss out on fun activities like we did. You can book kayak eco tours, or if you have your own kayaks, doing a kayak trip here would be awesome. Fishing is also a super popular activity here and you can also hire a charter if you don't have your own fishing equipment or you kind of want to get offshore and see what that experience would be like. I know shrimp and blue crab are huge here so I think that's a big part of their industry. I would say this is like top five places we've ever visited. This has so quickly made its way to the top of the list. I love it here. Before the Spanish arrived in the 1500s, Edisto Island was home to the Aristo, or Edisto tribe, who lived off the land and sea from as far back as 2000 BC. Artifacts and remnants of shells used by the tribe have been discovered in several spots across the island in special shell mounds. The island itself is only 68 square miles, and home to just under 500 year-round residents. Unlike many of South Carolina's other popular island destinations, this small, slow-paced island is mostly undeveloped, allowing its visitors to unplug and take in the beauty and serenity of South Carolina's low country. The area's well-preserved natural beauty is largely thanks to the Edisto Land Trust, which was created in 1994 to help protect the island from development. Today, the Land Trust protects nearly half of Edisto Island, and is certainly one of the reasons this island is such a special place. Edisto Island grew in popularity during the 1700s and 1800s because of the island's ability to grow indigo and sea cotton. Plantations and massive summer homes for South Carolina's elite were scattered throughout the island until the Civil War began in 1861. You can see remnants from this time in the numerous avenue of oaks that still line much of the streets around the island, including the entrance to Botany Bay, a wildlife management area home to Edisto's famous Boneyard Beach. We made it to Botany Bay, which is a nature preserve about five minutes from the state park, and it is absolutely breathtaking. I believe it's like a six or seven mile long loop that drives through all of the nature preserve, where you can see these gorgeous old oaks and palms and native grass surrounding the marsh, and it is truly breathtaking. There's also a beach called Boneyard Beach which is known for the amount of driftwood that it has along it but you have to check for the tides. We ended up getting here right at peak high tide so the beach is underwater. We're gonna be waiting about three hours to hopefully come back and see it in all of its glory when the tide has gone out some but you can see why this place is so special. I feel like there's nothing else like it that we've seen. As we were walking out to the beach this little creek forming over the path and I was just like eh, whatever. but now it's literally like a lake a big river like the path is gone and somebody just came through and said they tried to hop over it and they got soaked above their ankles so might be having to take my shoes off if you want to come see the beach at high tide definitely make sure you got some footwear that you don't mind getting wet because it'll happen 
whether you're messing around trying to skip over some driftwood or you're just trying to walk the path back to the parking lot but it was super cool to see it at high tide because what's causing the bone yard is beach erosion so the waves come in and they encroach on the beach they erode away the soil around the trees roots and then they fall over and then they just become this rad looking bony driftwood all over the beach today with the storm coming in uh, it was extra moody because they had a little bit of rain cloud and some texture over the atlantic super rad <laughs> Kill time while the tide went out, we took the scenic drive through Botany Bay, which took us past old pine and oak groves, through the grounds where a plantation once stood, and several active crop fields. Before we knew it, we were back up Boneyard Beach and really hoping the tide was working with us this time. This is one of the coolest places I think we have ever been. It's definitely one of the most unique. It is incredible to see the entire beach just filled with these old oaks and these palm trees that have been taken down in past storms and from erosion, just resting here so beautifully. The way the light kind of shines between them is really, really magical. So definitely time this right. Make sure you get the tides right because the tides are connected to the moon cycles each day, high and low tide will change. So check a tide cycle before you come because even a day's difference can mean an hour change between when high or low tide was from the day prior. On the other side was Eddingsville, which used to be a summer vacation spot for plantation owners back in the day. But a massive hurricane came through and wiped out everything. Not a house was left. So sometimes if you're walking along the beach, you can find broken remains from these homes, including China pieces. I think Dennis found a piece just now, but it's really important you don't actually take anything here. They do have a big fine for that. So leave no trace, come enjoy, take it all in, but leave it as you found it. But come, because this is awesome. We are finishing up an amazing day, the best way we know how, eating out. <laughs> While we have been cooking a lot in our RV this week, there are great restaurants to enjoy if you're coming to Edisto Island. Sea Cows is a really popular spot for breakfast. McConkie's is awesome for their burgers. Ella and Ollie's is also the more upscale option on the island. They do farm to table where they locally source a lot of the ingredients that they use. But we ended up coming to Briny Swine, which is a barbecue and seafood joint. We ordered a lot of food. Shocking, shocking. But we were very excited about the menu. They have pork rinds, which is like fried pork skin, and they put this delicious seasoning on the outside, served it with pimento cheese, so you use it like a chip. I don't know why we haven't thought of this earlier. This is genius. But we also got a cob salad, and it has pork belly, egg, green cheese, green goddess on it. So that's kind of like our green goodness for the meal. And then we also got brisket and pulled pork the side of mac and cheese and collard greens. Ooh, baby. I almost don't even need a knife to cut it. You South Carolina boys know about the char. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good brisket. Wow. 
Wow. I cannot believe our time here in Edisto Island has come to an end. It went by way too fast. This is a place you want to just really have a lot of time to relax, enjoy, and take in all the area has to offer. We've totally fallen in love with this place and cannot wait to come back. If you're planning a trip here, a few things you should know. First, be prepared because these spots at the state park book well in advance. They open up bookings to reservations 13 months in advance at midnight and I've heard you want to set your alarm because the spots will go like this. And if you are coming in October, a few things to be aware of is they do close down Botany Bay for hunting season. So if that's uh, high on your bucket list for here, which it should be, that's something to keep in mind and check into. But on our way out of town, we ended up stopping at the Hutchinson House, which is a really unique piece of history here for Edisto Island. When the Civil War broke out here in the South, most of the plantation owners fled, and they left behind a lot of the previously enslaved workers that created this newly freed black community. And Jim Hutchinson, who was the original owner of this land, was one of them, and he became a super prominent person. Not only did Jim serve uh, as a part of the Union during the Civil War, but he helped identify several of the Confederate spies that were here in Edisto Island, including his previous plantation owner and his half-brother. And when he returned back from the Civil War, he ended up helping create this thriving community for the black people here. And he ended up purchasing land from plantations that had been abandoned, and he parceled them off so that the newly freed black families here could have their own land to cultivate and, and be their own. But sadly, in the midst of all this, he was murdered. So his son, Henry, who was five when it happened, ended up taking over this land and becoming a prominent businessman in Edisto Island himself. He ended up owning a cotton gin, which is one of the only black owned cotton gins in all of the area. And Henry ended up building the home behind me as a gift for his wife. And it's a really cool piece of history at before it was falling to pieces, but thankfully the Edisto Island Land Trust has done a ton of work using donations to restore this project. And so they've completely redone the outside and they're about to build on a wraparound porch, which used to be here. And I think they're also gonna be restoring the inside. So if you're interested, we'll have a link to where you can donate to this trust, because I think it is such a cool project and it's great to see that Edisto Island is highlighting this piece of history. So we were very glad we came here. It's definitely worth a stop. There are tours you can take as well. But overall, we've just absolutely adored our time in Edisto Island. We hope you enjoyed getting to explore this area with us as well and hopefully it added a new destination for you as well in your travels. If you liked the video, of course, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. But thanks for traveling with us. We'll see you next time. So I also got some barbecue sauce when we were at Marsh, Hel Man Marsh Hen Mill. I always have trouble saying that. Oh, never mind. Ah, there we go. Normally have locally sourced. They normally have locally sourced. Soy.